Hello there. This is Mark the Lone Gamer, and I welcome you to my lone play of Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston's The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. This is being played on PC. It is a digital board game based on the classic choose your own adventure type uh, book or fighting fantasy novel of the same title and uh, well without further ado let's start okay this is a totally blind playthrough uh, even the original book I never really finished so we're going to be playing this pretty much blind and I understand that there are a lot of new aspects to this game that have been added because of the new format so we will be discovering a lot of new things right. greetings player welcome to the world of titan in particular the most notorious of all lands Alancia. I am Oriana, the Keeper of Souls, your guide and your Game Master of Swords. Many adventurers have entered Firetop Mountain over the last thirty or so years. Voracious readers have wandered the many passages, battling the monsters within and negotiating the many traps, only then to take on the might of Zagor, the Warlock. With skill, stamina, and luck, they have chosen their many paths and rolled their fate. Many of these brave young adventurers have perished in the darkness, and their souls even now lie unclaimed. You appear to be the next brave soul to take on the mountain and all it contains. To do this, you will need to choose an Alatian hero to take into the mountain. Don't get too comfortable with your choice, however, as the ways are treacherous. It is doubtful that you will survive. Only by bringing me the souls of the fallen may you be blessed with new heroes over time, each with their own quests within Zagor's domain. So let us select our hero. Oh, this is awesome. They actually have little figurines. I want this guy. You know? Alright, um, we have Ludica Ikadi, who seems to be a woman with a spear. We have Dekian Strong, a guy with a saber or a cutlass. Looks like a bit of a thief, he has a crossbow. Alexandra Black Sand. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Dual wielder. Another dual wielder named Aran Godspeed. Huh. Let's work our way from the left. Let's start with Lunika Ikadi. Description. Lunika is a keen explorer, especially of the bustling cities that she had previously thought were only legend. Every new person, place, or object she encounters is thoroughly questioned, explored, or examined before she rushes on to the next exciting discovery. Her endless enthusiasm can be tiring for her adventuring companions who take their civilized surroundings for granted. She tends to keep a memento from each new location she visits, keeping them in her pack or hanging them from her armor. Right. Attacks. Strikes directly in front, or All right. poison strike. Ludica has found poisons to be a particularly effective way to wear down her foes over time. Targets hit by this attack take plus one extra damage over the next three rounds. Okay, there you go. Ah, all right, that's it. All right, you have chosen Ludica Ikadi. Wise choice for your first game player. 
Before entering the mountain, I want you to visit the one-armed swordsmaster of Anvil, Lin Wen Tsai. He will teach you the basics of combat, which you would need to know if your hero is to survive Zagra's domain. During our adventures, we will encounter many different foes, magical and monstrous, brigand and beast. There will be an assortment of creatures lurking within Firetop Mountain, eager to bring your adventure to a premature end. But let us learn to walk before we start running, shall we? Lin Wen Tsai wants you to fight some Kintains, which will allow you to experience how combat functions. Alright, let's fight the Kintains. Oh, uh -huh. fight! So we have an attack. We can choose to move our attack by selecting the space. Select move to advance towards the contain. Right. Uh, move. Uh oh. After you select your action, both you and your opponent will play out their moves simultaneously. Move to the side to avoid the contains attack. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Sometimes it is better to attack where the enemy is likely to move to instead of where they currently are. Ah. Attack the space in front of the contain. Oh ho! If both of you and a foe try to attack each other at the same time, you will clash. It is then a test who has the greatest skill with the loser taking damage. Attack the contain and clash. Okay. Aha! Uh. Your enemies will move and attack in somewhat predictable patterns. Pay attention when they shake to indicate that they'll be attacking next round. Use your movement and attacks to defeat the contain. Alright. Ah. Uh. Ah. Oh. Uh. Yes. Oh, oh. damn it. Alright. Aha! You are triumphant! Of course! Ah! What? How many... How many of these guys do you have to defeat? Um... Defeat Despair of Contains. Alright. Uh... Left Slash! Ah... Ow! You bastard poison strike! Ha ha! Alright, uh. Ho ho ho! Alright. We are triumphant! Oh, this. This girl, uh, Lunica, kicks ass! Right, we lost two stamina, but we gained three souls. Oh, kind of like Dark Souls, eh? I wonder what we'll do with those souls. Congratulations, you have passed the basic combat training. Just one more thing, player. While on your quest, keep an eye out for wooden benches like this one. Alright. Using them will allow you to restore your stamina. If you run out of stamina, your adventure ends. So be sure to take a rest now and then. You also have some provisions which you can use at any time, but they tend to work best when you're resting at a bench, so keep that in mind. You'll receive three resurrection stones at the start of your quest. If your adventurer dies heroically, you can use one stone to bring them back to life. Be warned, though, that your hero will only appear at the last bench that you passed. You'll also lose any souls that you absorb between the seat and the location of their death. This is where I leave you, player. It is time for you to begin your journey. Time to travel to Firetop Mountain. 
Oh, this is just awesome. This is so cool. Look at that. Oh. Uh, this entire thing, it's, it's a combination of the game book, which is basically just a book, and a board game complete with figurines, uh, uh, the board. It's really cool. And uh, the best of all is that uh, you don't have to fidget with with figures, with dice or anything, and no more dice falling under the table, no more losing figures and stuff. This is, this is pretty cool. Anyway, you rest at the base of Firetop Mountain from your two-day hike. Strange red vegetation spreads across its peak like a brown red stain. This journey has taken you farther away from the fishing village of Ikad, but your lust for magic, history, and art has led you to Zagor's lair. This is very different because uh, in the original, he basically just took the role of one adventurer. I think this one, uh, this game, gives a different uh, background and uh, specific story to each of the heroes. Research and rumors have brought you here due to the promise of unique magical treasures. You mainly seek the Amulet of Hishra, or Ashra, a powerful artifact that offers protection and good fortune to those who keep the memory of the old gods. The amulet was prized by one known as Cosben Minamin. Cosben Minamin? Master of Fire Elementals who wanted to use the magical rubies set to the jewelry for some evil arcane axe. You have tracked him to the mountain where he is now in the service of the evil warlock. This is new. Alright. This is really cool. Although warned by Anvil's villagers, you fear not the threats of the warlock's creatures and traps. As you confidently approach the cave entrance, you level your spear ready for any encounter. Your adventure starts here. This is actual artwork from the book. I remember it well. Peer into the gloom. Oh, this is awesome. You see the dark slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. Hearing faint scurrying to the east, you light your lantern. Step warily into the darkness blackness. The dampness of this place reminds me of home. Still, I can almost smell the magic in the air. The old gods will protect me as I search for my prized amulet. Alright, we stand in the dark slimy cave entrance. Let us approach the fork ahead. This is so cool! This is awesome! Hey, there seems to be a guard here. Well, here... What's that? Huh. Let's try here, first. Uh-oh. The sound of scurrying continues ahead of you, as well as the sound of heavy footsteps. Uh-oh. The last thing I want is to run into a troop of orcs this early on. A few yards ahead, at the limit of the light cast by your lantern, you catch sight of a cleft in the tunnel wall. Yes, it's death. Hide. Shuttering your lantern, you wait with bated breath in the darkness. I should keep out of sight until I know what I'm up against. You listen intently as the footsteps come closer, and then pass by your hiding place without the owners of those footsteps ever knowing you are there. Your keen eye spies a few smaller rocks tumbling down from one of the granite walls as you wait in the dim cleft. Jump out in surprise what lurks in the corridor, leave your hiding place, and continue east. Stay hidden from the dangers a little longer. Uh, might be dangerous to stay here. Let's continue east. The passageway soon comes to an end at a solid-looking wooden door. Try to open it. The door refuses to budge. 
You listen at the door, but hear nothing. The amulet I seek is unlikely to be in this part of Firetop Mountain. Maybe I should leave this door. So, should we try to charge the door down, attempt to kick the, the door instead, turn back and return to the first junction? How do we know that there is, the amulet isn't there? Let's attempt to kick the door down. You give the door a mighty kick and it swings open easily. You're about to enter when you notice that the room is actually a pit. Had you charged the door, you'd be nursing a sore rub by now. Ah, very good. Examining the pit, you notice that the sides are full of handholds, so you, it should not be difficult to climb back out. Let's see what's inside. Oh, oh. Whoa, this is actually... I have to say that this is awesome. I love the presentation of this game. This is awesome. Try to keep... Look at that, there's even... Oh! You know what? I hope that they do this the same thing for the other fighting fantasy games. This is a great way to start it. Yes. I love the presentation. I really do. And you can zoom in! Oh. Alright. Uh, try to cave to the right. The first thing that hits you as you approach the cave is a stench. An unpleasant melange of mushrooms and rotting meat. Whatever was nearby, you sense that it has not strayed far from its home. I have a feeling that a swamp beast lacks here. That smell is unmistakable. Ah. Let's survey this murky cave. As you peer deeper into the gloomy cave, you realize that the unpleasant melange of mushrooms and rotting meat can only mean one thing. This is the lair of a slime beast. I thought it was a swamp beast. The snarling toad-like creature leaps at you with its taloned arms. However, your knowledge of this creature gives you the upper hand, and you thrust your spear into the beast's soft underbelly as it is exposed. It is mortally wounded and soon slumps to the floor dead with a final hideous burbling croak. Search the lair. Awesome. With the slime beast dead, you wipe the disgusting ichor that passes for their blood from your weapon and investigate the room. Apart from sticky pools of acidic slime and various mounds of other altogether more unpleasant material, there is nothing of interest here. Aww. Okay. Investigate the other cave. Rather a small cave with slime dripping from its rough rock walls. A sickly sweet smell assaults your senses as you enter. It's the smell of rotting meat. The remains of rats and even a half-eaten goblin lie in one corner. Yuck. In another is a large joint of meat. It looks like whatever is using this place as a larder is saving this choice haunch of giant ard wolf for later. That poor goblet has been half devoured by a slime beast. I've seen those kinds of wounds before. Well, we can take the meat because we already killed the, the slime beast. There can't be two of them. Okay, we leave the pit. Back up. All that for a piece of meat. Right. Hiya! A little way along the passageway, you come to what is clearly a sentry post. Aha! You approach with caution. You can see an orc in leather armor asleep at this post. If all the orcs I meet are asleep, then the amulet is as good as mine. Let us carefully approach the sleeping orc. Wake the orc and fight him. Or try to tiptoe past. Let's try to tiptoe past. You tiptoe past the sleeping orc, your dexterity allowing you to easily pass the snoring orc. You safely tiptoe past. Good. The passageway begins to widen until you enter a cave. 
However, blocking the cave's ex exit are two of the ugliest creatures you have ever seen. They have the proportions of dogs, but their hide is rough and scaly. Each beast is chained to the cave wall securely to their thick brass collars. The two orc hounds begin to snarl and strain at their chains. They cannot reach you, but their chains are long enough that should you approach, you will not be able to escape their slavery jaws. I'm not a big fan of orcs. I well, I'm not a big fan of dogs, orc hounds especially. I'm going to have to deal with them quickly, one way or another, before they attract the attention of an orc patrol, or maybe something even worse. Ah. Distract the orc house with some food. Of course, we'll use the Ardwolf meat. Taking the giant Ardwolf joint from your backpack, you toss it towards the orc hounds. The hungry animals pounce on it immediately. They wrestle over the meat for a moment until they manage to tear it in half with their powerful jaws. Taking their prizes away to opposite sides of the cave, they leave the way through clear. Ha! Not hesitating for a second, you take the opportunity to sneak past the orc hounds as they noisily devour the rancid meat. Bye bye! Joy! Huh. Ah! You mean the cave is clear? Can you follow the new passage that turns north? Set against the wall is a wooden bench where you may rest. Okay, let us rest. Player, I would strongly advise sitting on his strongly advise sitting on his bench. If you do not, Lunica Ikadi will not be able to resurrect at this location if they perish. Yep, let's sit on the bench and rest. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. Plus five stamina. Very good. To your left, on the west face of the package, passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a rasping sound, which may be some sort of a creature snoring. Open the door. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the center of the room is a, is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on the straw mattress, groaning in the far, far corner of the room is the green-skinned orc. He is a stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. He must be the guard for the night watch. I wonder if that wooden box contains any interesting trinkets. Is it worth the risk to take a look? Try to steal the box without waking the orc. Carefully, you begin to creep into the sleeping orc's room. <laughs> you needed a score of 10 or under and rolled a score of 7. You take the box and creep out of the room. With the box in hand, you leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside, you find four gold pieces and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. Right. You release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Right, let's, uh... Follow the passage. You arrive at another door, you listen at it, but hear nothing. We can't leave doors unopened, really. The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the center of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box and using your keen eye, you can see that it moves every so often. A small box moves every so often. In the far corner of the room is a straw is a straw mattress. Thrust your weapon into the box. 
cautiously, you open the box and quickly thrust your weapon within. There is an angry hiss, which is quickly silenced. Looking more closely, they discover that you have skewered some angry snakes which were trapped inside. You know, I kind of remember that, that trap, but, uh, well, there appears to be nothing else inside the box. It must have been a practical joke made by one of the orcs. You decide to continue to deep to head deeper into the orcs barracks. All right, we can turn northward. There, there's another door or eastward. Let's go north. Further up the passage on the west wall, you see another wooden door. You listen at the door and hear the worst singing you have ever heard in your life. Oh well, let's investigate. Oh shit! Uh, door open to reveal a small room. The room is dirty and unkempt. A straw mattress lies in one corner and the far corner of flight of steps leads out of the chamber. Of course there are two orcs. In the center of the room is a wooden table upon which a candle burns, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table. Seated around the table are two small orcs with warty skin dressed in leather armor. Yep, those are orcs. They are drinking some sort of grog, and by the way they stagger to their feet on their arrival, you assume that they are very drunk. Let's attack. The two drunken orcs you now face are obviously startled by your entrance, and as quickly as they are able, they fumble around for the weapons. Let's fight the drunken orcs! Alright. Fight. Boys just try. <laughs> Left slash. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Damn. Lunica kicks ass. The two Duncan orcs you now face are obviously startled by entrance and alright. You lost no stamina, you gained four souls. You have defeated the drunken orcs. You wipe your bloodied weapon on the mattress. The green blood leaves a slimy stain on the straw. Stepping over the body towards the table, you flinch at the foul stench of the creatures. You pick up the box from under the table and examine it. It is a wooden box with crude hinges. The name Farigo di Maggio is inscribed on a brass nameplate on its lid. Open the box. The box contains a small leather bound book entitled The Making and Casting of Dragonfire. You open the pages and begin to read. Fortunately, it was written in your own language and so was probably not understood by the orcs. Otherwise, this treasure would have certainly not be as loosely guarded as it was. The book is written in tiny handwriting by Farigo di Maggio. In it, he tells the story of his life's work, the creation of the Dragonfire spell with which to fight evil dragons. You read how, in his last years, Farigo finally perfected his spell, but by then was too old to make use of it. So he completed his book, locked it in a chest, and hid it in the depths of Firetop Mountain, afraid that it might fall into the wrong hands. The last page reads, And so you who now hold this book, you have my life's work in your hands. The power of destruction is yours if you wish it, but do not waste it. Unless you use the spell for the purpose for which it was intended, you shall be consumed by evil itself and die by the fire from your own hands. Remember, only when a dragon breathes its fire at you should you raise your arms and say, Ekiel Erif, Ekam Erif, Erif, Erif Dimagio. You say these words slowly and softly. 
Suddenly the pages seem to glow and this glow disappears. So do the words on the pages of the book. You repeat the spell to yourself to memorize it. Alright, if ever we face a dragon, foreshadowing, we have something to use. You have two ways to leave the room. You leave by the flight of steps or leave through the door. Let's go by the flight of steps. Climbing the steps, you finally emerge at the far end of a large room, as entirely kept as you have entered so far. A large chair behind a solid-looking table suggests that someone or something of rank uses this room. On one side of the room is a wooden bench. To your right is in the far wall of the room is a large door that clearly leads onwards into the mountain. However, a chest in the center of the room catches your keen eye. Uh-oh. Goblin cap. Opposite you is a man-sized creature with a warty face, standing over a smaller creature of similar race. With the whip in his hand, the orc chieftain has been beating his servant with his whip for him beneath him. Attack them both. Fight the orcs. An orc is an orc is an orc. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. Oh. Ow. Yes. Oh, he's pretty tough, huh? Oh, damn it. Alright. Why is it strike? did take a bit of damage though, but we are victorious. We gave four souls, defeated the orcs. We have 13 stamina. The green blood of the dead orc smells foul as it seeps from their bodies. You step around the corpses and investigate the chest. It is of sturdy construction, made of strong oak and iron, and is firmly locked. Looking closer, your keen eye notices there appears to be a mechanical trap fashioned into the lock itself. Let's carefully attempt to trigger the trap. Stepping to the side of the chest, you break open the lock and swing the lid open. Your suspicions were confirmed. A soft click comes from the chest and a poisonous dart flies out, harmlessly hitting the wall on the other side. Now that the chest is safe, you can inspect your prize. Leading in, you look into the chest to see what was being guarded so carefully. There's a stash of gold pieces and the label on the bottle shows it to be a potion of invisibility. Good for one dose. 25 gold pieces! Alright, will you take the bottle? Take the bottle, of course. Take the potion of invisibility, what a find. This will definitely come in handy during your adventure. Alright. It's time to sit on the bench and rest. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease, and your tiredness wanes. It's good to take a breath to a break to take a break on your adventure. False five, stamina good. We are back to full strength. Leave the room to the north door. I think that uh, well, this has been a pretty awesome time, but it's time for us to cut this. Uh, session short. I am really liking this game. I might continue playing it. So this might turn into more than just a lone play, but to an actual short LP or how long it takes. If you like this video, you like me to continue playing it, please comment and tell me so. But I think I'm enjoying this game. I like it. I really like it. So I hope we can continue doing this. 
So, till next time, this is Mark the Lone Gamer. I'll see you back in the next video.